Hey Falcons and NFL fans, welcome to another episode of NFL's Jocks and Pigskins with Tom Pollan. I'm Dave Holcomb. Got another exciting show for you today, talking about NFL free agency. Had a big trade in the NFL last night, Legereus Sneed is heading to the Tennessee Titans. But we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit and talk about a lot of the quarterback trades that have been going on over the last couple of weeks. And then if there's time, we'll get to some other quarterback news along with Snead and some other things that happened in the league this week. But we thought it was worthwhile kind of picking back off of, uh, you know, back to these quarterback moves that have happened. We didn't get to talk about them last week. A lot of young quarterbacks have been on the move Mm -hmm. since the start of free agency, Tom, and, and two were moved. One was moved right before our show last week. And then one was moved right after one, leaving Pittsburgh one coming to Pittsburgh, leaving Chicago. So, uh, and, and I mean, there's connections everywhere between us and, and the Falcons fans because Justin Fields was linked often to the Falcons in the draft a couple years ago. And then in, in, uh, trade rumors this off season. So, um, yeah, Terrence Moore doesn't seem to be very happy about the fact that Fields did not end up here in Atlanta, did not end up in Atlanta. And you can check out Terrence's videos on our channel, Atlanta Sports Unlimited. Give us a like on Facebook, subscribe on the YouTube channel, and you'll get all of our videos along with Terrence's. And by the way, shout out to Maggie T. Great to see you today. Great to see you on the channel and looking forward to seeing your comment and hope you enjoyed the show. So Today's show brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the app. When you do, use our, our promo code ASU, ASU. That gets you a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. So some free money for you. It's a great way to support our show. No football action for a while, although actually they do have some preseason uh, prop uh, entries that you can use for the entire year. Um, okay. But we'll be getting into more of you know the weekly stuff come August and September. But there's game action in other sports as well. So check it out. Download the app today. And when you do, use our promo code. Got the NCAA going, so it, it's time to edit. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. Yeah. And I got, you know, my 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 wife went to Smoothie King today. Ah, okay. Got a nice smoothie for me. And, you know, I figured I'll give Smoothie King a little bit of free advertising and mention we are interested in, in adding another sponsor for the show. So I don't know if we'll – land somebody as, as uh, popular as Smoothie King. But if anybody has a business, small business in Atlanta, Marietta area, that would like a little bit of love, maybe we can connect and yeah. and uh, help each other out. Reach out to us if if you are interested or know someone who is. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. Anybody, uh, you know, we're, we're easygoing guys here, so we're – you know, we won't, we'll give you some love on the show. You know, we'll take care of you. Maggie wants us to already get into what Cam Newton said, and that was in our tease for the title of the show. And, yes, I thought it tied in nicely with what we wanted to talk about already with the quarterback moves and all these trades where these young quarterbacks are happening because they haven't worked out in their current destinations. And there were a couple former Uh, Big name players, Cam Newton being one of them, that weighed in on why that's the case. And I've got the quote here from Newton. He has a podcast that he said this on this week. Yeah, the 4th and 1 podcast. Let's mention the name of the podcast. Yes, 4th and 1 podcast. He he says, uh, not just the Chicago Bears, but a lot of organizations are feeling the heat. And you really got only two to potentially three years to show you're good because the NFL has changed. We're not allowing players to develop anymore. We're trying to sell jerseys. We're trying to win football games. And we're trying to win a Super Bowl yesterday. So I don't give a damn about developing. You got to already come in able to carpent, carp, carpent, what is that word? Carpent. Oh, oh, I had his comments up and I don't know what he did with that page. Compartmentalize personal <laughs> versus professional. Professional manage. A locker, uh, professional manage a locker room where you are now thrust into a CEO role where you have to manage the owner off the field, general manager, head coach, position coach, 
and players. And for Caleb Williams, that's a tall task. That's a tall order. That's not to say he can't do it, but he just must understand what he's getting himself into. Right. Um, yeah, it, it's a tricky subject, but, you know, the game has changed. And, yeah, it is a business. I mean, Cam, come on. You know, you've been around. You know that this is a business. This is about winning, about uh, – and not just about winning for owners, but sometimes it's about making money. But um, I started leafing through a lot of uh, pro football reference last night and this morning because to me, a lot of it is the myth of developing a quarterback. And not many quarterbacks, first round quarterbacks, are expected to come in and play. They aren't they aren't there to be developed, except for like the Packers who had uh, Jordan Love sitting behind Aaron Rodgers, had Aaron Rodgers sitting behind Brett Favre. Teams don't do that because you run up against the, the rookie contract, you run up under that fifth-year option pretty quick. Right. And you got to know what your quarterback can do. But isn't you know, that – Newton's point? Aren't you helping Newton's point? You're not really disagreeing with what he said, right? I'm disagreeing with the fact that quarterbacks have never really sat, especially first-round quarterbacks, have never really sat. Most of them have been thrown to the Sharks. And now some of them, you could say, failed because of their evaluation. They weren't as good as they were um, evaluated to be by draft experts, by, you know, uh, NFL scouts and and failed, but they failed everywhere. You know, they, they went to other teams, but they still never developed. Um, and that gets to my point of, you know, everybody's got this vision that I can fix him. I know what's wrong. I know what the other team didn't do. I can fix him. Well, you never usually fix these guys. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I – I think for the most part, that's probably true, but there are guys that are exceptions and there are, I think there's a few I can think of that didn't play right away either. Um, like Carson Palmer didn't play right away. Um, didn't become a hall of fame quarterback or anything like that, but he sat for a whole season before he got a snap on a bad team that he was probably better than the quarterback that played. I believe his rookie season was 2003. And then he came on in 2004 and they were, or maybe his rookie season. Oh, no, I think his rookie season was 2004, and then his first season was 2005. His rookie season was 2004. 2004. And he no, he started 13 games in 2004. His rookie season oh, was 2004. I'm looking at it right here. No, his rookie season was 2003. He was not in Ben Roethlisberger's class. He was not in the Eli Manning, Philip Rivers, Ben Roethlisberger class in 2004. He was in the 2003 class. All right, Pro Football Reference does not show him being in the NFL in 2003. Because he didn't play. <laughs> look at look up there. No, they would have had did not play. Look at the top um, of his page. It says. You no, know, I'm looking drafted. at game logs. It says drafted at the top of his page. Bengals, first round pick, first overall, 2003. 2003. All right. Um, well, but, but what I was going to get to though was like well reference you let me go. <laughs> uh, Geno Smith is a recent guy that didn't work out as a second round pick. Didn't work out for a couple teams, right? But then got a chance yeah, to start. Yeah, very rare. It, it is very rare. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I do. I now, do that's think that's one of the rare and, instances. But I, I just I, again, I, if I, you're I a first rounder, that, you're there to play. But uh, but uh, you're being forced into I, a situation. Can you hear me? Talk? Up a lot here for some reason. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, you seem to be freezing. I'm not sure if I got too many windows open or what. 
Uh, let me try to close this down a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, you were freezing up on me a little bit. I might have a slow internet connection today. Um, okay. We hope it improves. But, you know, you're expected to be the guy if you're in the first round. Um, you're expected to play. You're expected to develop. Now, if you don't see that development by the third year or after the third year, you're running up against where you have to make a choice on the fifth-year option. And that's I, just the way it is. That's the way the NFL has developed. I don't disagree with you, Tom, but these guys are being traded before the third year. I mean, uh, Justin Fields, maybe not. He was after his third season. But all the guys from Troy yeah, no. Kenny Pickett, yes. All those guys, which only one was a first-round pick, but none of those guys really got a chance to develop. <sighs> Pickett got a chance to play. No, he never got a chance to sit behind somebody. He was expected to come in and kind of compete for that job with what Mason Rudolph was there and Trubisky. Trubisky. But Trubisky had already been uh, uh, set aside by the Bears. The Bears decided that he was not going to develop into a quarterback. It's I it's think tough it. to say because, you know, it used to be the NFL, you used to have to sit a quarterback coming straight into the league. Right. Because their program, their college programs were not running pro set. Um, a lot more programs are doing that over the last decade where you got a guy who's actually run professional plays in college and is coming straight into the NFL. Um, so that's something that's changed since Cam Newton's time. So it, it's, I, I think ideally you would like to give a guy a chance to sit, but you look at guys like Andrew Luck started right away. Ryan started right away. Um, I, but I don't think his point was that he has that he didn't mention anything about having to sit. It's about giving these guys a chance to get knocked down, not play well, and then respond to that. Well, and, see, in some instances, I would agree. Okay. And in some instances, I would agree. Sam Howell did not have a chance in Washington. All right. He got he got knocked all over the place in Washington. And I don't think he had a chance. Um, I don't think Eric Bieniemy maybe was the best offensive coordinator for him. Um, Bieniemy was used to calling plays for Patrick Mahomes. And uh, yeah, but. I don't think Sam Howell got a very good uh, got a good shake in Washington. I don't think Ritter got a very good shake in Atlanta. No quarterback coach was kind of thrown into the mix and said sink or swim. Well, he did. I mean, he did swim at times. There were times he had some very good games. But he made a lot of mistakes, but he was not given a chance to develop and correct some of those mistakes. Now, see, that's one of the things that I thought when they brought Kirk Cousins in, that Desmond Ritter was going to be sit for a year and be the heir apparent. Yeah. And get a chance to learn behind a real quarterback, get a chance to fix some of his mistakes. Um. I see Justin Fields, Justin Fields, you got a chance to see him for three years. And as a Chicago fan, you saw him. Um, you never saw his footwork get better in the pocket. Um, he always had to kind of move to the right, to the left, uh, move a little bit in the pocket. He was never comfortable in the pocket. And he never became comfortable in the pocket. And that's one of the issues that the Bears had with him. Uh, now, he did get the job done in a lot of instances. In a lot of instances, he didn't. Um, but, you know, he, he relied on a couple of wide receivers last year. 
Uh, lost his connection with Darnell Mooney, and Mooney ends up with Atlanta. But, you know, the season before, Fields and Mooney were a great combo. Well, when DJ Moore gets there, and Cole Komet develops as a pass catcher. You know, Fields is leaning on those guys and, and not as much on his secondary uh, targets. Uh, Fields did not learn how to throw the ball out of bounds, lived to make another play, uh, was always hanging on to the ball too long. Um, not an anticipatory quarterback. And the Bears did not see that getting any better. They've seen three years of him. Now, a quarterback can lose, you know, but you want to see a quarterback, it, it, he can lose, he cannot have some of the supporting pieces in place, but you need to see him develop some of these skills. And that's where the Bears did not see Fields progressing. Now, you didn't give Sam Howell a chance to progress um, because it was one year and out for him. You know, Howell should have had a little bit more time. Ritter, if you eventually thought he was a starting quarterback, apparently Raheem Morris and Zach Robinson didn't. Um, but I think Ritter should have been given more time. I think Ritter should have been given time with a quarterback's coach. They never had a quarterback's coach. Yes. Yes, I agree with that. I, I think Kenny Pickett should have been given more time too. I think he was ultimately traded though because he did not respond well to Mason Rudolph taking his job and then did not respond well to yeah. them bringing in Russell Wilson. They kind he of didn't want to be there. The Steelers kind of tested him and he failed and he wanted out. So they traded him to a different yeah. team. And Matt Mike says this about Ritter as well, that he thinks Ritter may have wanted a new start too somewhere else, which well, that's possible. But I mean, he was going to get a new start under a new regime here. Um, the only problem was I don't think Raheem Morris and Zach Robinson had much faith in him. And I think Ritter kind of read the tea leaves and realized that, yeah, he did need to go someplace else. And, and uh, he knew that Atlanta fans didn't have much faith in him and probably realized the coaching staff didn't have much faith and yeah, wanted out and wanted to go somewhere. Let me ask you a question about fields though. If the Bears didn't have the number one pick, don't you think Justin Fields would still be there? Wouldn't they still be selling the idea that Justin Fields was their guy? God, Dave, that's a very good question. I think I, I'm going to answer. That is a fantastic question. I will let you think about it, and I'm going to answer it myself. I think the answer is yes. If they only had the number nine pick, they're not taking a quarterback at number nine. They're not trading up for number nine. And I'm not arguing that anything you said about fields is wrong. I think all of your points about fields are, are very valid, but I just think the bears have a different perspective on that and all of that and are selling it a little differently to their fan base. If they don't have the opportunity to get Caleb Williams. Now I don't think them going for Caleb Williams is a bad move. I think it's a great move. I would rather have a younger quarterback on a fresh rookie contract that I can start over with. And that's why I think the deal to move fields was kind of a no brainer, to be honest. Yeah. You know, the compensation was low, but. Well, the I, com I, compensation was low because fields wanted to go to the Steelers. Yeah. And the bears accommodated him. They didn't shop him. They, they said, all right, what will you give us for him? So that's basically why they got the conditional fourth for fields is. Right. They, you know, he said he wanted to go to Pittsburgh and play with Russell Wilson, play with that regime, and and uh, the Bears accommodated him. Yeah, yeah, and it worked out in the Steelers' favor, and that's where Fields wants to be. He thinks he can compete for the starting job there. Um, and the Bears, I think, ultimately works out for them too because they're going to get Caleb Williams. But I don't think they're moving on from Fields if they only have the number nine pick this year instead of also number one, which is kind of ironic when you think about it, because they traded the number one pick last year because they believed in Justin Fields and weren't going to take that's a quarterback true. last season. Yes. That's and true. then it, it just so happens that the team they traded it to, despite getting the number one pick and drafting the quarterback was terrible. And they're back 
with the number one pick a year later where Fields didn't play well enough, I guess, to justify keeping him again. <laughs> right? I mean, is that, well, is that an accurate story? Well, the thing is, it was the second year of Fields playing under Luke Getze. Everybody thought there would be progress in Fields' game. And in ways there was. He took advantage of DJ Moore being there and did a better job. But again, there were things that the Bears saw that he never improved on through three, three seasons. And that's, I think, but you're right. I think if they didn't have the first round, first pick overall pick this year, yeah, yeah, I think they keep fields and they sell fields as still the quarterback of the future. And and they would probably, I guess they would be facing a very interesting question with the fifth year option. Very interesting because that fifth year option, fifth year option is twenty five million dollars. Yeah, he's going yeah. from six to twenty five million. Yeah, it's a big jump, <laughs> and and I, I that's why he wasn't ever going to get a second round pick. Looking back at it now, the Bears were never going to get a second round pick for him no. because a team that wanted to acquire him didn't want to pick up that twenty five million dollar. No. And you can't really trade for him and not pick it up unless the compensation is is pretty low, a day a day three pick, and that's right. ultimately what the price was. So, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, because the Bears have spent an off season putting more pieces in place on offense, and I think a lot of Chicago fans feel that you know you didn't give Fields this time kind of opportunity in the first couple of years, you know, he had some second rate receivers. He didn't have a first rate offensive line. Uh, he was struggling, you know, he, um, it was his first year under Luke Getze and Getze was trying to turn him more into a pocket passer. And he was, you know, chafing against that. Um, but again, going from year two to year three, he didn't improve in the pocket. He didn't improve as a passer. Um, and that's one of the issues. So, yeah, um, and I don't, I don't want to disagree. And I'm sh and definitely Fields should take some responsibility or maybe majority of responsibility in that. But I, going back to Cam Newton and the development thing, I think there's a problem in the NFL developing quarterbacks. You just look at the names of these guys coming in the league the last three seasons, and there's only like two or three quarterbacks that I'm like, yeah, that's a guy that's going to start in this league for 10 years. And there's no other pipeline for the NFL to get their quarterbacks. They're only coming in from college. These are the guys to work with. If that's if Fields is one of the best to work with coming out of college – then you got to get coaching and development that maximizes his skills. I, I, that's kind of my big takeaway from Cam Newton's comments. Now, in, in a way, yeah, the Bears did not follow up with putting him in a situation. Yeah, and I don't. I'm not trying to call out the Bears. Trying to you know call out your team. It's happening around the league. Yeah, of, I mean, look and, and I say Sam Howell ran into the same thing in Washington. Right, and and like Bryce Young wasn't really put into a great. Oh, situation. Bryce Young was put into a terrible situation. Yeah, because his number one receiver was traded before he even made the team. You know that. Right, right, and there's really Brock Purdy is the only guy that's like developed. You know, as a lower round pick or or any pick really. C.J. Stroud has done really well. Only small sample, just one season, but he looks like he's set up to be a starter for a long time. I think Purdy is. And then the only other guy that basically I think will be a starter is Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Kind of had a down year, dealt with some injuries. So maybe I shouldn't be overly critical of him. But I like he's the banner, the best guy at quarterback in the 2021 class, which was supposed to be this historic great class. And everybody else other than him has been – has moved on, has been traded or, or, you know, just flat out, not, uh, not resigned. Well, you can look at Mac Jones situation in new England too. I mean, his second year in the league, he's given Joe judge and Mike and Matt Patricia. Right. Calling yes. his offense. Yes. An awful situation for him. Right. Awful. Terrible. Um, 
and I guess Trey Lance wasn't developed because Brock Purdy was instead. Um, and well, Trey Lance got injured. Trey Lance wasn't around. Trey Lance, if when Garoppolo got injured, if Lance had been healthy, I think Lance would have kept playing. True. But That's true. I, the, the Niners had no choice but to put Brock Purdy in. I, they never expected to be playing the, you know, last pick in the seventh round of the draft, and, and putting him on the field and trying to win with him, and they did. They got away with it because Purdy ended up being a pretty good quarterback. That's a good point. I did forget that Lance started one game or two yeah. or game and a half, um, and and then got injured and, and lost it to Jimmy Garoppolo for good or Brock eventually Brock Purdy for good. Um, but I, I, it's still, I guess maybe he didn't get another starting opportunity because he because of the team he was traded to Dallas. But he still doesn't. The fact that nobody jumped up and said, "Hey, I want to trade for Trey Lance and and have him compete for a starting job." I mean, he was traded for a day three pick to the Cowboys, kind of like a oh, we'll have him as an insurance if Dak Prescott's contract or doesn't work out or if he gets injured. To me, that's a sign that. The, the NFL at large is not confident in Trey Lance developing. Well, but here you got Trey Lance getting a chance to develop behind an NFL quarterback well, in an NFL he, offense. Yeah, I guess, but he's not getting a chance to play. No, he's never, but he's, he's never getting a chance to sit. He's getting a chance to learn. He's taking snaps, you know, during the week. He's seeing how Zach Prescott reacts to things. He's, He's in the room when the game plan is being discussed. He's, you know, he's part of all of it. So is any of that helping him? I think we might have different definitions of development. (laughs) I think we do. Yes. We do have different definitions of development. Yeah. Yeah. Because I I mean, wasn't he, he wasn't their backup. Who was their backup? Um, Cooper Rush, right? Yes, Cooper Rush. I'm sorry. I don't think being a third string quarterback on on the practice squad is developing. I, I... Yeah, but you're a first round pick. So you're probably st- only in the league because you're a first round pick. So True. the Cowboys are saying we can develop him. We can take our time with him because we got a quarterback ahead of him. Yeah, you know, I, it is what, what the Packers did yeah, with uh, Jordan Love. I, I, but I think what Newton's point was that there's no development from the sense of once these guys go in and play and you see them for half a season, one season, or um, whatever, the decision is made. And really, I think you could argue the 49ers moving on from Trey Lance after he played one game it supports Newton's argument. And Brock Purdy had played a month. He played well, a Brock month. Brock Purdy had. He had quarterbacked his team into the playoffs. He did. He did. That's so true. So how do you justify putting Drake Trey Lance in ahead of Brock Purdy when Purdy's the guy who's, you know, the man at quarterback and, and you're in the postseason? You know, you can't justify putting Trey Lance in at that point. Well, I wouldn't put him in in the playoffs, but the following season, oh. they were already – they had already moved on to Brock Purdy. Yeah, so, because so, he was a playoff quarterback. Yeah, I guess. So, I, are you actually going to put give Trey Lance a chance to compete for that job? Or are you going to say, Brock Purdy, you won games, you are the man? He it, won. I mean, you traded up to number three for Trey Lance because you thought he would develop, and you, may, you moved on from him very quickly. I think that supports right. Cameron Newton's point. Now, you didn't, but you didn't. You didn't expect to find the quarterback that you got. That's true. That's true. The 49ers are the one team that kind of get a pass in this and not developing yeah. their first round pick at quarterback because they got another one. And but, no. but if that had not worked out, we would the media would be all over John Lynch for that trade. They gave up so much <laughs> to move up to number three to get Trey Lance. And a lot of people yeah. aren't all in on Trey Lance like they were. No. And you're right. The, the fact that Brock Purdy has stepped in and developed, well, he's a Super Bowl quarterback now. Yeah. Um, you know, has kind of taken that pressure off of John Lynch. Because, yeah, John Lynch was feeling it for a while there. So, 
he got lucky that they came up with a quarterback, you know, Mr. Irrelevant. That right, <laughs> and he's he's the best example in the last three years of a guy that was put in a good position to have success and has taken advantage. Say what you want about it. he's only a game manager, blah blah blah. He's done very well with what he's asked to do. Yes, and and these other guys that we've named really haven't, other than C.J. Stroud. None of these other guys have been able to maximize what they've been given and they've been put in bad situations and they haven't had success. But well, see, Trevor Lawrence hasn't really had a lot of success, but he's still going to get a lot of chances with Jacksonville. They're not going to give up on him right away. He's the guy that I guess I'm on the fence about in terms of, you know, is he going to develop into who he should be? fulfill his expectations or he's or, taking a few knocks and he's getting the chance to develop as his first string starter. That is true. That is true. They're not trading him. They're not moving on from him. Um, but I mean, he's the only one, he's the only one left from the, that 2021 highly heralded quarterback class that had Lawrence Wilson, Lance fields and Jones all in the first round. The last four guys I named are not on the teams that drafted them. That was three years ago. Yeah. They didn't even finish their rookie contracts with their current teams. That I think is what Newton's point is. They don't even get to finish their rookie contracts with the teams that drafted them. All right. But you see what you see. And you've got to see a certain level of development behind the quarterback that he's learning how to be a quarterback in the NFL. Um, And that sometimes that's, that's the difference. You get, you got to. Now I agree with Newton that some guys, and I agree with you, I've come around to your definition of development as far as guys who are not getting that, you know, chance really have never gotten the chance uh, I feel Justin Fields has gotten the chance and did not show it. Okay. Um, I think Justin Fields makes some of the same mistakes in year three that he made in year one, even though he's been starting for three seasons now. Uh, as far as not being able to anticipate open receivers, uh, maybe concentrating on a couple of receivers to the detriment of others. Um, you know, I think Fields has been given a chance to develop under, all right, let's say Luke Getze wasn't a good offensive coordinator. I think it's fair to say that. All right. I mean, they didn't keep him. So, I mean, the Bears didn't think he was. No. And – Maybe Fields learns his maybe Fields learns his craft a little bit better if he doesn't have Luke Getze as his offensive coordinator. And that's the point I would make with Kenny Pickett. Yeah, in a year's time, the Steelers went from we're going to be patient, we're keeping Matt Canada as our offensive coordinator to we're blowing everything up. And it was quite a transition to that of mid-season firing Matt Canada and then saying, okay, we're going to finally get a taste of what Kenny Pickett can be without him, only play one full game without Matt Canada, played really well in that game, and then he never played again and he never will again for the Steelers. That That is tough to swallow for me. It really is. And, and, and I think that, again, goes back to Newton's point. Is he really – wasn't given an opportunity to really develop put in bad situations that um, we'll see if he can, well, I don't think he's, really, he's not going to play. He only had a year and a half. And not oh. to mention, I think the beginning of his career was botched too. I don't, uh, he, he was put into a game uh, at halftime in week four, I believe it was. When they had played the uh, the Cleveland Browns Thursday the night bef- the the week before, Mitch Trubisky did not play well. 
could have very easily bench Trubisky after Thursday night and Pickett would have had a mini buy to prepare for the, the next game. Instead, it, Tomlin sticks with Trubisky, but benches him at halftime, puts Pickett in a situation where it's like, you got to go win this or we're one in three, doesn't end up winning that game. And then his first time preparing all week that he's a starter is against Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. And then the next week they played the Miami Dolphins, who were, uh, you know, obviously a really good team in 2022 as well. Both games were on the road. The other game, you know, the game that he came in at halftime, if he had started that game, that would have gotten his first start at home. So, it, like, Pickett's situation was botched from the start. And really, they probably shouldn't have signed Mitch Trubisky, but that's a whole different issue. Yeah, it's a whole different that actually, I think um, the Athletics' Mark Caboli made a really great point on Twitter at the beginning of free agency. Free agency shouldn't happen until after the draft. I think it happens the way it is because it's more convenient for the media. It's more convenient for the league to. Well, the league needs that time, right, to evaluate prospects, and they right. needed something to happen in March. Exactly before the draft came up. So that's where free agency landed. Exactly. So I think the, you know, the Steelers didn't want to go into the season with Rudolph as number one. So they signed Trubisky and then some mock drafts had Pickett going in the top 10 or top five. Others didn't have him going in the first round. So I think the Steelers were betting on, they're not, we're not getting Pickett. Pickett's going to be drafted. And I think if they really wanted Pickett, they would have traded up for him. They didn't do that either. They hedged their bets and said, we're staying at 20 and we're picking the best prospect and Pickett was there. So, yeah. and, and that's why they had Trubisky and Pickett and went with Trubisky to start the season. Maybe they shouldn't have done that either. Uh, you know, it's easy to play. Well, again, back, but Pittsburgh, they thought that the Bears had made a mistake with Trubisky. He had not developed him right. He had not done right by him. And then found out that Trubisky wasn't very good. I mean, I don't know if they thought. You think they're thinking the same thing with Justin Fields? <laughs> I, yeah. I don't. I don't think they think that. I think they just look. A at unique situation is the fact that they have Caleb Williams available to them, and they're going to strike. I mean, they they're sitting in a spot where they can take advantage of it. And by ourselves, we're not necessarily talking about all fields. This is a talk about Cam Newton's comments about developing quarterbacks. Because Marcel's, I think he's getting tired of hearing the name Justin Fields. But um, oh. yeah, um, this isn't just, it's about what Cam Newton had to say about developing quarterbacks. And all right, but. I'm laughing. Can you about excuse it. a quarterback? <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I guess I'm representing the Georgia Bulldogs with my red. Yeah. Um. God, I lost my train. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's all right. About Justin Fields developing? No, 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 no. About does a quarterback have to have a perfect situation? I mean, or, I, or, yeah. A quarterback come in. And raise the situation. Now, does a quarterback, can you only judge a quarterback's development by who's around him and who's, um, and the level of talent he has around him? Well, I, I think the last part of, I think you're right. You can expect that, especially if you're drafting someone in the first round, but it's a, but as Newton put it, it's a high task. It's a, it's a high ask. To, to want that. All right, but even Hall of quarterbacks don't get ideal situations first, second year. Because once they're drafted, teams are trying to build around them. So are you are we saying it's a failure of the team or the failure of the quarterback to not come in and produce and be the player that the team thought he was going to be? I think it's more a team failure. I, I really do. I, I, I don't think a class of quarterbacks that draft scouts thought would be one of the best 
in, in, in recent history, all of them fall flat. That to me is a sign that the teams fail. Well, I suppose we'll see over the next couple of years as far as. But you know, I, but I've I've seen I, I went to Pro Football Reference. I called up a lot of first round, basically all first round quarterbacks, going back to the uh, restructure, you know, the realignment. Yeah, and you know, a lot of these guys never did develop, no matter what team they were on, no matter what situation they moved to. They never developed. They never became the quarterback everybody thought they were going to be. So is that the team's fault or is that the quarterback's fault? I think it's I, – I, I could, it could be both. I guess it, it's case by case, I would say. Um, I do think, like, if Justin Fields doesn't develop – or I'll use a different example. Um, Mac Jones. I think that's a great example. Mac Jones came in and played really well his rookie year. Yes, he did. And then the, you brought up the hires that the Patriots made were not in his favor. He had a defensive coordinator and a special teams coach – Running his offense. Running his offense. Yeah. In his second season. And even though they corrected that mistake, I think the damage was done. Like Jones' yeah. his development but has already been has already been stunted and and he's he's never gonna be what he was in his first season again, I don't think. Um if he lands in a perfect situation, maybe he will be. But he probably never will land in that perfect situation. He probably will never get an opportunity to play in that perfect situation if if he's on a good team, there's going to be other quarterbacks that are probably better than him on the roster. Um, so it will take an injury for him. Because, to get. because so. of year two, he's going to fail as a quarterback. Uh, you know. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I think the damage has been done and, and it's unfixable. I don't think he's ever going to get back to having the confidence and, ha and playing with the swagger and the ability that he did as a rookie. So in that situation, yeah, I think it's mostly the team. Okay. We'll see how someone like Kenny Pickett responds. I think he could be potentially damaged as well. Or Desmond Ritter. Will Desmond Ritter bounce back? Desmond Ritter is a little different because he never he wasn't a first round quarterback. He wasn't regarded as a guy that was definitely supposed to be a franchise guy. All right. But you had Sam Darnold, who's been with three teams now, lost the only game he started last year for San Francisco, which again Super Bowl team but he didn't play well. Now is the fact that um, he didn't get the coaching he needed the first three years in New York or that he's just not a very good quarterback. Um, I mean, I guess I would still say it's both. I don't think he got good coaching in New York. I don't think anyone would argue that. Did he get good coaching in Carolina? If anything, he, he's, I don't think he's going to end up being Minnesota's starter, but the Vikings have signed him as a placeholder in case they don't get another starter because they have confidence in him after what he did in San Francisco, which That's wasn't that why he's, he's playing under Matt Rule. So, you know. Well, there, there you go. That's You're supporting my point. Matt Rule wasn't a good quarterback developer. Didn't develop anything. But he was four <laughs> years in the league as a first-round quarterback, his first-round pick. We could go around and around on this for we could. We could. But you know, remember remember Sam Darnold saying, um, you know, I'm seeing ghosts out there. Who who well, killed his who killed his confidence? Who killed it other than other than Bill Belichick? Uh well, I, yeah. keep, I keep saying Tony Eason still hearing uh, Richard Dent's footsteps in his dreams, you know, after the 85 Super Bowl or <laughs> Super Bowl 20. Yeah. Because he got he got completely demolished by that defense. I mean, he, he was he was ducking when nobody had even gotten there yet. So, yeah, I, I understand, but at some point, it's still, I don't know. You, you still got 
to be the quarterback. You still have to lift your team. You have to. I I think eventually that's what you have to do. But as a young quarterback, the team has to lift you first. You know, I, I think back to the Ben Roethlisberger days in 2004, even when they won the Super Bowl in 2005. Roethlisberger, I went back and watched the playoff games from that season last summer. He played very well in the playoffs, but he was in a perfect situation for him. Yes. Great defense, great running game. The, mm-hmm. the head coach wanted to run the ball, wanted to play defense, had good wide receivers, veteran offensive line. Like there couldn't have been a better situation for a quarterback. Tom Brady had a great situation too. Yes, he did. So, but like, does that mean that I think Tom Brady's only the product of Bill Belichick? No, of course not. Like he became an MVP because he became the best player in the league, maybe the best player ever. All right, but he worked. He worked at it. He worked with his people. He worked with his teammates. Well, I mean, you know, you think Sam Darnold's working at it too. But maybe he's not a good quarterback. (laughs) (laughs) Tony has Tony has more faith in in Sam Darnold, put it that way. (laughs) Yes, he does have better talent and coaching in Minnesota than but last year. He had talent and coaching in San Francisco. Still lost the only game he started uh, when Purdy was injured. And, you know, did not play well in that game. So he's going to another good situation with a good coach, a good offensive-minded coach, uh, good receivers, and, you know, Addison Russell. And, 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 you know, Jefferson, who's one of the best in the league. And – so does that elevate him? Did did all the starters for the 49ers play in that game? He he started in week 18, right? Did everybody play? Let me look that up. Brian has does not have a lot of faith in Darnold. He says he's a backup, that's all he'll ever be. So he's on your side, Tom. Yeah, he started week 18. All right, I'll give him that. And it was the Los Angeles Rams. <sighs> I I would say that's just too small a sample. Whether he played well or didn't play well, I mean, he 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 only played in one game. Right. I did not look at the game that he played in. Um, he also got significant snaps against the Ravens in like mock up duty after Purdy threw four interceptions. Yes, um, which was Purdy's just. Came apart that game somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tony bringing up Minnesota has a really good offense line with two former first rounders, three second rounders. Yeah. I mean, I don't, we'll see if they have faith in, in starting it. But um, yeah, I think, but if the, I, you know, you come down to Atlanta, they basically gave up on Ritter. They gave up on Ritter uh, when they signed Cousins. Because the league is a win now proposition. And if you don't win now, you're a coach, you're a general manager, you don't get that next contract. Um, so, yeah, you know, you don't get as much time. Yeah, it, that's kind of what it comes down to. Now, we made about 45 minutes to get down to that point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a very good point, though, is, is – I don't know. When did they put in the four year rookie contract structure plus the fifth year option for first round picks? I don't remember. I don't remember when that was. Cause that really is what changed it. Yeah. That, that puts you on a clock. It really does. And, and maybe it's better because before that you had these like Jamarcus Russell, remember him? He got this ridiculous contract for, for just being the first round pick for, for being first overall. And and that's why it ended up getting negotiated into the CBA. Right. Because NFL players were tired of seeing these rookies come into the league and making big money, making more money than they were. Right. You know, and they had been in the league two or three years. So yeah, that that's kind of why the players agreed to that. But 
again, every time you agree to something like this, you have unintended consequences. This is the unintended consequence that your rookie is on, on a clock. And if you don't see, no matter what the team situation is, if you don't see enough out of him after three years, you almost have to move on. Now, the Bears are in the perfect situation because they got the number one pick again. Yeah. Uh, the that, Ravens, that allowed them to move on much. The Ravens easier. probably could have traded up to get one of, you know, maybe uh, Drake May or Jaden Daniels and, and tried to start again with another rookie quarterback who's more regarded coming out of college. Um, I just don't think they had any faith in Ritter to, to continue sitting and learning and developing. Um, but I would say if they didn't sign Cousins, they would have moved up for one of the rookies or tried to get uh, one of the other, you know, best of the rest at number eight. Um, but see the Falcons got a veteran quarterback, got a veteran quarterback who can play. And yeah. now has opened up that eighth pick to getting the edge rusher that they need desperately need. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think for the short term, it's a much better solution. Now, we'll see how Ritter develops. Does he do better in Arizona? Um, you know, he's going to be playing behind Kyler Mur you know, Murray, but there's a lot of questions about Murray, too. So, you know, he might get another chance to be a starter. But, you know, once a guy starts moving around, once the first round draft pick starts moving around to different teams, he really doesn't come into his own as a quarterback. So uh, Larry Oren says, I think rookie contract started in 2011. That would have, I was going to guess around then. That makes sense because I yeah. believe we had a long lockout that summer. Yes. So, and I think, but I think one of the, that was not the uh, breaking point as far between the league and the players. I think the players were just as happy to see those rookie contracts, see the wage scale, uh, the draft pick wage scale come in. And yeah. I'm laughing at one of the comments, not you. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, Jason has a funny comment. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, you just don't have the time. You've got to come in and you've got to show what you can do. You have to show that you're competent. What happened with Ritter last season? Too many turnovers, too many bad decisions. Now, he does not get a chance to sit on the bench. And behind Kirk Cousins and say, okay, I made this decision last year. I see Kirk making this other decision. You know, I probably should have reevaluated some of these things I've made. He didn't, but he doesn't have a quarterback coach again to sit and watch game film with him. Yeah. He doesn't have a quarterback coach to come up to him next to him on the bench, take out the tablet and say, okay, here's what happened in that last series. Well, you know, and, and something I've said multiple times, he should have been playing earlier in, in 2022. He should have. And, because and it was obvious Mariota wasn't the guy. Right. So you can say, well, he was he was learning from Mariota. He was developing. Like, no, he needed to play and get more experience, A, to see if you actually wanted him to start in, in 2023. Again, Ritter's a little different than these other quarterbacks because he wasn't a first-round pick. No. There wasn't ever a guarantee that he was going to be a starter. So, Actually, but he was considered a steal he because was. a lot of draft experts did have him slotted for late first round, early second round. He was. That's true. So, I mean, either way, he needed to be starting and playing earlier to start developing, start getting experience so that he was ready to go in 2023. And he really didn't get that other than a small taste in December and then didn't play in the preseason. Right. So, so you know, if you want to talk about – um, you know, not being put in a situation to have success. The, I, your quarterback coach that you bring up a lot is is a great example. But 
you know, he didn't get the reps that he really needed to to develop. I don't think he got the support from his head coach that he needed. Yeah. Yeah, Jason, absolutely. He should have played more than one drive in the preseason. Yes, absolutely. That was a failure of Arthur Smith. It was a failure of Arthur Smith to be the team's offensive coordinator, which means he didn't have time to sit down with Ritter and do a lot. Um, he hired an offensive coordinator, but Dave Ragone was never an offensive coordinator. Right. Is there anybody to tell me that Dave Ragone was the offensive coordinator for the Falcons the last three years? Right, right. Well, we're running short on time. I wanted to get to this question from Tony, and we might have to think about it for a sec or two because it's a in-depth question. Tony asks, in the NFL, in the NFL, the NFL needs to have a cap structure, a pay scale guideline for each position and year served because at the quarterback position, their pay scale is ruining the NFL. Your thoughts? I don't know because teams still manage to stay under the cap, still manage to stay competitive. I think your scouting has to be better as far as, you know, bringing in players on rookie contracts that develop into starters that you can lock into starting positions for two or three years in their rookie deal. Um, so your scouting has to be better now. But I, we've seen a lot of star quarterbacks get paid some pretty good money, but it hasn't restricted – their teams from bringing in complimentary players. So I don't know if it's wrecking the structure. I don't think it's easy. I think it would be a lot easier if they could, if they weren't paying out big money to, you know, one position. But again, you know, said it before, the quarterback is the best position on the field. Yeah. And and it's the most, it's your most important position. Right. Yeah. Um, So I, I, I guess I'm not against that idea, but I'm not for it either. I, I I think it is crazy what quarterbacks are paid. It's insane, but that's, that's their worth. And if that's what a team wants to pay for Kirk cousins, if that's what they want to pay for whoever, then, then it is what it is. And, And maybe after we see like Russell Wilson's contract was a huge mistake. And some of these other mistake contracts, Maybe we'll see less of it in the future. I don't know. Maybe it will wise up if if that becomes more of a trend. But with the salary cap going up so much every year too, I mean, I don't think this is a one-year thing where it goes up $30 million. It's it's going to be increasing at this yeah. rate going forward. So they, have so many more, they have so many more streams of revenue coming in. Literal with, streams. Yeah. With, uh, yeah, <laughs> literally with streaming services, right. You know, so you have these revenues that the NFL has never had before. Yeah. You know, they've had to make their money off the networks and ESPN and right. and and live with that. And now they got Amazon who's dying to pay for more games. Uh, and they're playing more international more games. games. Uh, Nickelodeon wants, you know, more to pour me more green slime on the fields. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy. And well, Jason, he has a good comment here. He says, can't miss on the quarterback position or it really sets you back. And comes back to the fact that how do you know when you've missed on the quarterback position? Um, or are you too quick to think that you missed on the quarterback position. Um, and that's kind of comes to the crux of the discussion we've been having here, Dave, is. Yeah. 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 It's the same question you have with head coaches, right? Like, I don't think unless it goes awful, terrible, like terribly, like Urban Meyer bad, then you really shouldn't hire or you really shouldn't fire a coach after one season or even two seasons. No. Like it takes, especially if he's taking over a bad team, it takes time. Kind of like Frank I Reich was, last year. Right. Like Frank Reich had no chance there. No. Um, and I, we just talked about how Bryce Young had no chance too, but it, like it, you could yeah. argue that Frank Reich, you know, he, maybe he wanted CJ Stroud. There's been uh, inklings that that was actually the quarterback he wanted. The owner intervened and wanted Bryce Young and, and, and then, 
you know, Bryce Young isn't as good as C.J. Stroud. Frank Wright ends up getting fired midseason. It, right. Well, Dave Tepper is a, a terrible owner. Terrible. <laughs> I mean, terrible owner in whatever team he owns. Now that Dan Snyder's out of the league, I think Dave Tepper becomes uh, – goes down to, you know, worst owner in the league. Unless you talk to a Bears fan, the McCaskies are the worst owners in the league. So, but um, – so yeah, it's it's just a nature, and I think Cam probably yeah, there is a point to that, but it's the nature of the league, it's the nature of fans wanting to win and not necessarily being as patient with a quarterback after a couple of seasons if they haven't seen um decided development out of that quarterback over a couple of seasons. But I, I will say that I think it's the job of the owners and the coaches to not let the fans influence them. And, and surely a lot of head coaches think they have to win now to save their own jobs, save their own necks. But, um, right. you know, you also have to realize, Hey, I've got a plan. I've got, you know, I believe in this guy. I'm going to develop him. And I'm just because he's had a bad game or two or hasn't shown yet that he is the guy that I think he is. I'm not going to listen to fans and make a change. Which I think is what kind of what happened in Atlanta. I think that's why we're just not here anymore. Part of it. I know a lot of it too is blank's age. We've talked about that in the past. Blank's age. Right. He's, he's, impatient he wants to get that super bowl yeah and i think that's another thing another reason why the you know why the falcons haven't taken the time well mariota we knew was bad because mariota had already you know failed in tennessee yeah. <clears throat> so but yeah i think arthur blank he went from ritter's our quarterback to you know, we need a quarterback. You know, we got to get somebody in here who can play. Right. Well, they got him. Cousins can play. Yes, for sure. They got they got the guy that they that can definitely play for sure. A and couple of years down the road, they're going to have to do this again. Right. But for if now, Cousins doesn't take them to a Super Bowl. Then it gets worse because now you got fans who are going to be angry. Then. You know, how do you get – how do you allow that next quarterback to come in and develop and be comfortable with the team? I mean, and, and the Bears see this, you know, again, Justin Fields won the first year, second year, had a lot of problems. And, well, he didn't win because he, he's had losing seasons all three years. But, you know – the fans say, you know, we've seen him. We've had three years. He hasn't, you know, the Bears haven't gotten any better. So he's got to go. Well, but if you think he's the guy, yeah, you got to keep him. And I think, I think you're right. I think Justin Fields just ran up against the fact that the Bears have the number one pick again and have a chance to get that guy didn't take that chance last year yeah. because he still believed in fields, but he had the chance. I have the he chance now to do it. Again. To do it. Yeah. We're out of time. Today's show was brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the app. When you do, use our promo code ASU. It gets you a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. Thanks so much for tuning in today, everybody. Like yep. us on Facebook. Subscribe our YouTube channel, Atlanta Sports Unlimited to get all of your Atlanta sports news. And we'll be back live at noon next Saturday. Yep. Everybody have a great week. Great discussion. So have a great week.